Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. For those of you just joining live, we welcome you here into the Third Heaven Sanctuary for one more worship song. We want you to get into the presence as we saturate this place with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Just worship with us.
sanctuary today we went into a deep time of worship here that song by William McDowell praise God for the Holy Spirit he's our advocate and comforter encourager and we welcome his presence and the presence of the holy angels today and uh, we we decided to go live early today and just have to let you be part of the worship we were so thankful and grateful and glad that all of you can join us online today feel free to share with your friends God bless everyone here as well. And we're going to get into a message um, called the fruit and gifts of the Holy Spirit. And the reason why this is important is that we're, we're focusing in on deliverance this month uh, of October. But I should, even before I go there, praise God, the worship was so awesome. I want to read Psalm 100 to you, which says that we should enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. That's Psalm 100 verse 4. Give thanks to him and praise his name. I love that the King David gave us this image of entering in through the gates with Thanksgiving. And this is Thanksgiving weekend here in, in Canada. I know in the U.S. it's next month of November. But we're celebrating Thanksgiving weekend this day. And every day should be Thanksgiving unto God. But then we can go into a deeper level of entering his courts with praise. And I believe that's referring to the outer courts. Now, in the New Testament, we can go even one level deeper, which is the inner court, a place called the Holy of Holies. Why? Because we are in a new covenant and the blood was shed for the remission of all sin. And, and only Christ Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, the, uh, the anointed Holy One of Israel, allowed us to enter into the Holy of Holies through the blood of the Lamb, which was shed for our sake. And, and, and I love that. Hebrews 7, 8, 9, 10. You can read all of Hebrews, but... Those chapters show us clearly that he came in the order of Melchizedek. It's a, he's a, our holy high priest. He's the only mediator between God and man. And, and, and that's why we can exalt and lift up the Son of God to his rightful place at the right hand of the Father who's interceding on our behalf. Praise the Lord. And, and it, find, it finishes off here, Psalm 100 verse 5 says, For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues throughout all generations. Praise God. I, out of all the messages I've been preaching over the last year, I really enjoyed last week about the extravagant love of God. Because if we can just tap into that love of God, which comes from the third heaven of the, where God dwells in unapproachable light, we can experience his uh, agape love, his faithfulness, everything that's mentioned in this Psalm 100. Uh, God is a faithful, faithful covenant-keeping God and in, in He'll bless those who, who love him for a thousand generations. I love that. It's in Deuteronomy, a thousand uh, uh, full blessing. 
But the, the, the message I want to get into today, because as much as I love the, I want to do a part two, let me put it that way, on that message, the extravagant love of God, because we can spend a lot of time on it. But I feel we need to equip the saints today. Is everyone ready for some equipping? <laughs> Praise God. I'm going to be short today. If you want me to go for an hour, let me know. Give us some feedback. Share with your friends. But I feel like I'm going to try to keep it to either 30 or 40 minutes. Or, or please give us some feedback. I just want a message today that you can listen to over and over again and, and develop it in your life. So number one, let's turn to Galatians 5.22. Father, we thank you for your word. Bless your word today, Lord God. We exalt your name and your word above all things today, Lord God. And bless everyone watching, Father, with power, love, and a sound mind, with shalom, peace, joy, and, and all the uh, blessings you have for them today, Father God. No weapon formed against anyone shall prosper. I take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Thank you for the peace we're feeling here in the sanctuary. Let it flow through the camera and touch and, and, and everyone watching today, Father. We give you the glory in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Just a short prayer because I want to get to the point today and, and you can join us Wednesday night for prayer intercession right here in the sanctuary, 7.30 p.m. every Wednesday night. But today we're going to focus on the fruit of the Spirit, which is Galatians 5, 22. And I'll go th through this very quickly. It says, but the fruit, notice it's singular. So all these attributes make up the fruit of the Spirit. Number one, we have love. Two, joy. Number three, peace. So love, joy, peace. Then we have patience, kindness, goodness. Faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So there's nine fruit of the Spirit there. And if you want to memorize it, it's good to group it in threes. And it's just, I find it easier to memorize when you break it down. And, you know, there's a whole study we can do on the fruit of the Spirit. But I just want to give you those nine attributes to show that if you're truly born again of the Holy Spirit, we should see these attributes um, in our lives. They should be manifesting. That's what I was looking for. We should see love, joy, and peace manifesting in our lives. And we should, see, even if you have, may have had it before, after you're born again of the Spirit, you should see a greater measure of God's love, of God's joy, of God's peace. And then all the rest of the fruit, they should be uh, uh, growing, especially self-control and self-discipline. There should be a difference because we should be led by the Holy Spirit in the New Covenant and when you're born again of the Spirit. And so I'm giving you these uh, um, uh, uh, scripture verses today to show us what is the new covenant all about. It's about manifesting the fruit of the Spirit. Because if you read verse 23, it says, against such things there is no law. So that clearly shows us that if you're being, if you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, and being led by the Holy Spirit, you will automatically start to manifest all these fruit of the spirit and against those things there's no law so that, that's that's the key there we need to be that the holy spirit is the key difference in the new covenant and and i'm going to leave the fruit of the spirit for us to study more on another time but i want to focus today on the gifts of the spirit because i feel as we're praying for revival and awakening as some people call it we need to empower the body of christ to a new spiritual level of authority and power because i think that's really what is lacking right now We've, we've, you know, preached on all sorts of things, but my goal is to see people uh, identify their gifts that they have in their lives. A lot of people have gifts of the spirit, but they're lying dormant is what I believe because they need, you have to fan the flame of the gift within you and actually activation is the key word I'm looking for. We need to activate the gifts of the spirit in each and every one of us. There's many times where we preach, you know, accepting Christ as your saved Lord and Savior as uh, the pathway to salvation. And that is great. That's the greatest gift God has given to all humanity. But he wants us to be, to activate the spiritual gifts within us. And let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and you'll see what I mean. There's nine gifts listed here. There's another six or seven in, in the book of Romans. But I want to focus on these nine spiritual gifts. And you can break it down into three categories. Again, something I call the revelatory gifts, the vocal gifts, or the inspirational gifts. And then the third one is the power gifts, my favorite. So uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. And we'll keep going from there. I just want to say the one thing I learned a while back is that when we're preaching, it's easy to start preaching about the Word of God. And yes, our testimonies are powerful and to, and, and, and to share about what we know about the Word. 
but I learned that the best thing we can do is to preach out of the Word. Does that make sense? So a lot of times you'll notice that I have my Bible open and I'm reading the Scripture and then I'm preaching from the Scripture. And I feel that's really key because it, we can easily just start preaching about God and about the Word, but we need to preach out of the Word. I don't know, someone I believe needed to hear that today, so that's why I'm, I, I just wanted to sh share that, that I feel that's the most effective way of getting the Word of God into the hearts of the people is to preach from the Word. So uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I should ask Reverend Andrea to, to, to read it if she likes, but if not, uh, no, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do it here. Praise God. Uh, there's a word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and gift of faith. Those are the three, the first three uh, gifts of the Spirit. And these should also be manifesting, or we should be developing them in our lives as we go, as we're led by the Holy Spirit. And that's my challenge to all of us today. If we want to see revival, we need to be moving in the gifts of the Holy Spirit as well as the fruit. Amen. Okay. Verse 1 says, Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. So Paul, the Apostle Paul is writing this saying he clearly wants us to be not uninformed, but to, but to be informed of the spiritual gifts. You know that when you were pagan, somehow... Or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. So again, we need to have the Holy Spirit to identify Christ Jesus as the Messiah, uh, and, uh, and as well as the Holy Spirit being our key, towards salvation. He's the key towards activating the gifts within us. Verse 4, there are different kinds of gifts. You notice in, it's in the plural? So different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them all. So the Holy Spirit is the one who distributes these gifts. And all I'm saying is that many of you have the gifts, but you need to, to, to start using them. We activate them and then fan the flame and, and get them going in your lives. Okay, here we go. Verse 5, there are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. So that's an intro to what we're about to get into. Now here are the gifts. Verse 7, now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given the Spirit, it, it, sorry, it's given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. So everyone say the, the word of wisdom. To another one, there's a word of knowledge. Word of knowledge. Another one, there's, by the same spirit, there's another gift of, faith. gift of faith. And then by the same spirit, we have gifts of healing. You notice it's plural. Yes. And then we have a working of miracles. And then we have prophecy. And, to, and then distinguishing between spirits or discernment of spirits. To another speaking in different kinds of tongues. Notice that's plural, and I'll get into that in a moment. And to still another interpretation of tongues. Praise God. So there's the nine gifts listed in, in, in chapter 12. And then finally, verse 11 says, All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He distributes them to each one just as He determines. Now I'm going to go through these very uh, uh, slowly and give you an idea of what these gifts mean. Is this a, a refresher for some people? How many people are moving in the gifts of the Spirit? This is how we're going to empower the church, empower the body of Christ to actually start to see healings manifest. We should be able, uh, by, the, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. And I've experienced that many times. Many times I get a word of knowledge and I see things in the Spirit, like a vision or a dream, um, pictures, praise God. A lot of times God will speak to me through a picture and then I'll in, ask for the interpretation and share that word. But let me start with word of wisdom. Uh, Proverbs 4, 7 talks about wisdom being the principal thing. And a good example of that is King Solomon. He's the one who brought us all the Proverbs. And if you read 1 Kings 3, there was two women. I believe there were two prostitutes that had children. And they were living in the same place. And one of the children died. And, and the one woman took the other woman's child and said it was hers. So they came before King Solomon and King Solomon put him to the test. So what he did, he used a word of wisdom. He had the wisdom to challenge them. And, and you can read the story, but 
he, he said, give me a sword and I'm going to cut the child in half and give half to one and half to the other. And the true mother of the child said, no, no, give it to the other woman. And then uh, he knew through that wisdom that that was the true mother of the child and, and she did get her son back, her child back. So the whole point is I'm giving you examples now of how the gifts of the Spirit operate. King Solomon asked God for wisdom and understanding to govern the people and God gave it to them. And with, through that wisdom came wealth. Solomon was the wealthiest man in the kingdom of uh, Israel. Uh, um, even up to this day, no one has reached the level of wealth that Solomon had where he built the amazing temple, uh, even using gold and so many uh, precious stones. Now here we uh, go with um, a verse, okay, uh, the word of knowledge is the gift too. Um, but let me just read what I have here in my notes on the word of wisdom. It's the insight into the divine will and purpose often given by the spirit to solve perplexing problems and situations. I can give you some modern day, you know, uh, prophets and men and women of God and even political leaders who have the wisdom to solve perplexing problems. Sometimes people will win a Nobel Prize or Peace Prize or whatever because of some uh, 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 wisdom that they have to solve a perplexing problem. Now, number two is word of knowledge. The reason why this is so important is that Hosea 4, 6 says that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Why? Because they have rejected knowledge. And I feel God is saying that we need to take the time to just study his word and then apply it. We need to be doers of the word. And that's why I'm taking my time. I'm not going to give you a lot of scripture today. But this is the main chapter, verse 12 of 1 Corinthians. And if we can just get this going in the body of Christ, my God, we will have revival like we have never seen before. Because everyone should be operating in this word of knowledge, word of wisdom. And whatever your stronger gifts are, you'll, you'll be able to move more like fluently or easily, uh, more effortlessly in them. Uh, uh, but I believe everyone has all of the gifts. It's just that some are stronger than others. And in what you actually practice, you'll get better at. Amen. It just starts to flow uh, better. So uh, the word of knowledge is, the, is a supernatural revelation of divine knowledge or insight uh, to know things that could not be known of by oneself. So again, it's, it's a download from God, revelation from God. And that's why it's part of the revelatory gifts. Wisdom, knowledge, and discernment is a revelatory gift. Now, the, 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 it, they're not listed in that order, but I'm going to just focus on discernment right now. And the gift of discernment is actually being able to um, discern what kind of spirits are operating in our, in the environment or in people, even in, 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 in communities, in different places. And the Bible says to test the spirits. How do we do that? If you ever do any kind of Christian counseling, uh, you know, I'll just ask people a question. You know, do you believe in God? Whatever their answer is. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the most speaks. So how can you discern? You ask questions, and then depending on the response, you can discern what a person's belief is and even what spirits they're operating in because sometimes you'll get some very uh, interesting answers to questions. Are you born again of the spirit? Uh, are you a Christian? You can ask any kind of question to see what a person's response is and what spirits are operating. But when we do prayer intercession is when God will supernaturally... Uh, reveal to us what we need to pray against or you know if you're in a specific area if the area needs to be cleansed uh, of, of certain things God can give that through a prophetic uh, uh, discernment uh, and, and so those are the, the, the revelatory gifts the gift of prophecy which we're about to get to is is coming up under what I call the vocal gifts it goes along with tongues and interpretation and let me just see here what we have for those gifts. The gift of prophecy is a supernatural utterance in the native tongue. So, for example, if a prophet is releasing a prophetic word, he needs to speak it, even though he's hearing from God, from the throne of God, from his grace, the grace of God, he needs to speak it in a language that's understandable and intelligible to the local people he's ministering to. So, for example, if you're in an English congregation, you're going to give the prophetic word in the English language, not in Hebrew or Greek, if people can't understand that. So that's uh, another thing, uh, a challenge there is how do we discern the spirits? Uh, the prophet should be hearing from God. And I, know, and I always know God speaks 
in the language that you can understand them. Uh, there's also what's called a seer's anointing, which is people who can see pictures and visions, like I mentioned, in the spirit, but a prophet hears. Most of the time, that's the difference between a prophet and a seer. A seer can see into the spirit. A prophet can hear God's voice, whether it's audibly, whether it's scripture verses. But once they hear from God, they have to deliver that message audibly in a way that people can understand. So it says here, it is a miracle of divine utterance, not conceived by human thought or reasoning. It includes speaking unto men to, for edification, exhortation, and comfort. So again, a prophetic word should bring one of those three things. It should edify you, exhort you, or bring comfort and encouragement. And, um, and, and there's also prophetic words of correction. So many times the role of the prophet is to bring correction, and it even could be a word of judgment. Uh, but most times it, we see that it, it, it's a confirmation of what you know God is speaking, but the prophet is confirming what you need to hear at that time and season of your life or of the congregation's life. Um, now, the difference between prophecy and then speaking in tongues, I want to clear up this thing about uh, there's different kinds of speaking in tongues. What happened in the book of Acts, that was a one-time event which is never duplicated from what I can see anywhere else in Scripture. The tongues of fire came and rested upon them after in the upper room, and on the day of Pentecost they spoke in a, a tongues, but it was a language that people could understand. So there was no interpretation required. Does that make sense? So the type of tongues that happened on the day of Pentecost, no interpretation was required because it was an actual language that other people could understand. And that still happens today. I, I know some people that have spoken in like Hebrew or Chinese or, or, or Spanish or whatever language, Arabic, and they don't know the language, but the Holy Spirit empowered them to speak words in that language. That's one type of tongues. But what we're talking about here is a tongue which is for your own self-edification and it requires interpretation. So when I'm speaking, whatever is coming from the Holy Spirit and I speak it, it's not a, 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 a language that's understandable. It's not a human language. It's a spiritual language. That's a different kind of speaking in tongues, which is for my own personal edification. I can worship in tongues. I can pray in tongues. But we need interpretation in order to understand that in a native tongue. And that's why there's a, those two gifts go together. Uh, interpretation of tongues is a supernatural ability to interpret in the native tongue what is uttered in other languages not known by one who interprets by the Spirit. So I hope that clarified. There's more. I'm going to get more into uh, why we need to speak in tongues to edify our spirit man and ourselves and, and the power that comes from it and also it's our communication directly to God. So when I'm speaking to God, I don't have to use Hebrew or Greek or English uh, uh, I, I can speak in tongues and God understands me and he'll, he'll speak back to me through his word or through pictures and dreams. You know, J Joseph could interpret dreams very well, same as Daniel. So there was gifts that God has given to us so we can communicate it with God who is a spirit. So God is a spirit. He can communicate in different ways. And that's why we need to understand the language of the spirit and activate all these gifts of the Spirit in us. Praise God. I hope this is helping someone today. Any comments or prayer requests, Andrew? Because I'm going to be short with the teaching, and then we're going to pray and minister for the activation of the gifts of the Spirit. Finally, my favorite. I'm going fast here, um, but I want to get to the power gifts. Uh, and this is the third category, because I love this. This is what we really need in the church today in order to see, uh, you know, a, a, a demonstration of the power of the Spirit. Does that make sense? Apostle Paul said, you know, we, anyone can preach the Word, but we need to have a demonstration of the power of the Spirit. And that's my challenge when people say to me, they're born again, I say, are you baptized in the Holy Spirit? And if they don't know how to answer, or if they say yes, was, was there any evidence of speaking in tongues? And that's my question, is we need to mature and grow in the things of the Spirit. And to me, speaking in tongues is one of the basic things God has given us for our own spiritual edification. And so we need to be teaching people how to activate that gift and to flow in it. And it's something we should be doing daily or how, however often you're led to do it. But the gift of spiritual language is very, very important. Now, as far as the power gifts, number one is faith. Hallelujah. Anybody want some faith? <laughs> we want to increase our faith today. Praise God. But there's different kinds of faith as well. There's the saving kind of faith, whereas if you believe and you receive, 
the spirit of Christ, Messiah, and, and you repent. That's what uh, salvation is all about, repenting and turning from our uh, old ways and turning to God ways. And Jesus said we must be born again of what? Of the water and the spirit, John chapter 3. So there should be a spiritual baptism. There should be a water baptism. All this is part of our faith. That's saving faith. But the gift of faith is something different. It, it, it's a supernatural ability to believe God without human doubt or any unbelief and reasonings. So again, our mind has to get out of the way. In many of these spiritual gifts, we cannot be led by the mind. You have to be led by your spirit, man. Does that make sense? So when you're led by your spirit, suddenly you can hear God's voice. You can uh, uh, communicate with, with the Creator. You can, wow, thank you, Lord. Activate that gift, Father God, of speaking in tongues for someone watching today. Whew, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' holy name, amen. I'm saying this because I heard some Christian teaching on the radio this week, and I was kind of surprised because I, I'm not going to mention any names, but I respect a lot of these teachers I hear. But when they said that they only believed there was one type of speaking in tongues, it kind of shocked me because I'm like, wow, this is someone who I look up to as a good you know, Bible teacher. And uh, it just goes to show that nobody has all the answers. We all have to learn and humble ourselves. Praise God. That's why today I'm, I'm doing things a little different, more in a teaching mode than preaching, because I just very had a very humbling experience this week, and, and God showed me. Look at Apostle Paul. Um, he had four different experiences, and, and these are four different phases the Apostle Paul went through. Number one, in Romans 11, 5, I believe it is, that's what I wrote down here, that he says he believed that he was not inferior, inferior to any of the super apostles. So again, you can see Paul now, he, you know, he had that blinding road uh, experience on the road, on his road to Damascus, that, you know, uh, power, that, that, that life transforming experience. And now he's saying he feels that he's not inferior to the, any of the apostles. But then in 1 Corinthians 15, 9, he says he saw himself as the least of the apostles. So you see the humbling effect as he became greater and greater in the gifts of the Spirit and in the revelation. My God, Paul gave us almost half of the New Testament. So in a way, you could qualify him as one of the most powerful of the prophet of the, of the apostles. And you could even call him a super apostle. But he later changed his mind to say, now I, I see myself or I view myself as the least of the apostles. And, and even though in verse 10 he said he worked harder than all the rest. He still gave himself a humble uh, 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 um, uh, um, thinking of himself. But then in Ephesians 3.8, this is where it gets interesting. He says, I am the very least of all the saints. So how can he go from being not inferior to any of the super apostles to being the least of the apostles, now to being the very least of all the saints? And then finally in 1 Timothy 1.15, he says, I am the chief of all sinners. <laughs> so this, you know, Paul went through an amazing and it's because he was persecuting Christians at the beginning and then later, because of God's grace, he was saved. And, and it's all by God's grace. Where sin abounds, grace abounds even greater. Amen. So eventually, as you become more spiritually mature and you realize how little we know compared to our creator and the Messiah who gave us perfect wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And he's the key that unlocks all the hidden treasures of God's knowledge and wisdom. And that's you can find that in Colossians. Praise God. A lot of stuff I'm saying, it's not even in my notes, but God wants us to know that Christ had all knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and he was the full embodiment of, of the creator, Abba Father. But all of us are human, and we can only achieve, we need to grow, let me put it that way, we need to grow in wisdom and stature, just as Christ himself did. But you'll see that humility is one of the keys to, as we grow in spiritual maturity, you won't you can let pride, wow, thank you, Lord, and repent of all pride, in Jesus' mighty name. So this is why I feel teaching is very important today. It's going to be a, a very basic foundation for us to build on. And if we can just get these nine gifts of the Spirit correct, or activated, I should say, and move in them, you'll start to see a demonstration of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to pray for all of you uh, for the gifts of the Spirit to be activated. Amen. So where was I? The gift of faith. Another example I'll give you of the gift of faith is when Peter stepped out of the boat on the Sea of Galilee he was able to walk on the water. To me, that's just amazing. Incredible is the word I wanted to use because none of the other apostles had the courage or the boldness to step out of the boat. But why did Peter do it? Because he saw the light of the Messiah of Christ walking on the water. 
uh, and, and he said, Lord, if that is you, you know, call me out to you. And, 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 and the Lord said, yes, it is me. And, and Peter, I believe the gift of faith. Wow, thank you, Lord. I activate that gift of faith in someone watching today, Lord, and all of us. Wow, thank you, Lord. By your stripes, we are healed and made whole. Whew, thank you, Lord. The gifts of healing are both are flowing already, but they're going to get greater in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, but the gift of faith goes along with the gift of healing and working of miracles because in order to walk on water, and I've been in Israel. It was one of the most life-transforming experiences we were on a boat on the Sea of Galilee, and I took a look over the edge of the boat, and I said, my God, when I saw those waves hitting the boat, I said, you know, you got to have some supernatural level of faith to get out of the boat and believe you can walk on that water, and Peter did it, praise God. And this is even before the day of Pentecost. He did it during the three, three and a half year uh, um, ministry of, of the Messiah in Israel, and in that goes to show you that when you're in the presence and power and anointing of, of Christ in all his glory right now, Christ is the risen, he's in his risen, this glorified state, praise God. And when you experience that powerful light of Christ, you can, you can accomplish anything. Nothing is impossible for those who believe. That's why I love that song we sang earlier. So that's the gift of faith. It's different from the saving faith and there's different level and measures of faith. But today we're praying for the gift of faith to come alive and activate in all of you watching today. And you'll do supernatural things in Jesus' mighty name. And then gift of healing or gifts, uh, it's plural. It's, it's healing all manner of sickness by the supernatural power without any human aid or medicine. Uh, we're not against, you know, uh, natural ways of, of bringing healing and health to people. But there's a supernatural way and that's the gifts of healing. And you'll notice that in, in, in you know... Let's just use it as an example, I'll say Benny Hinn. Many people know that he has that gift of healing uh, operating in his ministry and in his life. And that's why a lot of people get supernaturally healed because of that gift operating in his life. Now, many, uh, many other uh, uh, people as well. I'm just giving him as one example. <clears throat> but we need more of that. We need the gifts of healing operating in the entire body of Christ. And that's why we desire here at Third Heaven Ministries to raise up some powerful prophets, evangelists, even apostles, pastors, teachers, the whole, all the offices and ministries that God is calling us to, to build up, to go out. We need to raise an army that will, praise God, bring healing to this world who's in, in the, the desperate need, a dire, dire need of, of supernatural healing. And then finally, number nine, working of miracles. I love this because I said, God, you know, what we see today is, is amazing. Uh, you know, people are getting supernaturally healed and feet growing out and, and, and people coming paralyzed, people coming out of wheelchairs, whatever. We see lots of stuff happening. But I said, God, where are the miracles that, like that Moses did when he parted the Red Sea? That's a nature miracle. That requires a working of supernatural miracle. Have you seen that? Has anyone seen you uh, the Jordan parted or, or, or a Red Sea parted? That we need people to be at this level and it can happen. Christ did it when Jesus was on uh, during the storm on the Sea of Galilee again, what did Jesus say? Peace, be still. And the whole uh, uh, creation uh, basically obeyed him. I mean, the, the wind calmed down, uh, the waves calmed down. There was a peace. Can you imagine just a hush just came over the whole Sea of Galilee? Because why? The Son of God spoke, not out of his humanity, but out of his divinity. The, the Spirit of, of, of the Holy Spirit within him, he spoke by the power of the Father in heaven. And when he spoke, everything came to a total standstill peace. And Mark, the gospel writer, said, who is this man that even the wind and the waves obey him? Mark 4, 41. That goes to show that even the disciples were amazed. They, they'd never seen anything like it. Here's someone who can speak to the wind and the waves and the creation listens. So that's called working of miracles. And not only did Moses do it, uh, uh, Jesus did it. Uh, he empowered us through the, these gifts listed by Apostle Paul to do these supernatural things. And, 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 and the definition here is that it's a supernatural power to intervene in the ordinary course of nature and to counteract natural laws if necessary. So Jesus turning water into wine that supersedes the laws of physics and of nature. So, you know, Jesus can multiply two fish and five loaves and, and feed 5,000 people. That's you know, a, 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 a miraculous types of uh, 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 um, uh, 
signs and wonders. Praise God. So this is what we're after. If we can get all these nine gifts operating, and this is why teamwork is important, because some people are stronger in some gifts than other. But when we all work together in, in, uh, as a team, my God, you're unstoppable. Praise God. So that's what God wants, why he wants to raise up an army. But everyone has to keep humble and work together as a team. My God, I see 11 players. Is that right on a soccer field? <laughs> God has just shown me again. See, there's the vision. Praise God. God just dropped that picture of a soccer field with 11 players on it. And he's saying that, you know, Christian Ronaldo cannot win the World Cup by himself. <laughs> you know, he's a great soccer player, one of the top in the world. But it's teamwork that will win the World Cup, not one single player. So this is why I'm challenging now. See, that's interpretation God has given me to the vision. He just showed me is that, you know, one person can be somewhat effective, but he sent them out two by two because you have 10 times the effectiveness, right? One shall chase a thousand, two shall chase 10,000. That's exponential power when you have two instead of one. But now God is saying he's raising up an army of not only two, but a multiple. Imagine if you had three, four, five, or hundreds or thousands of uh, pastors, apostles, prophets, everyone working together in one accord. My God, we could really change the whole community the whole city, the whole country, the whole nations. My God, thank you, Father. You've given many nations to your people, Lord. But I pray for a spirit of unity, Lord, according to Psalm 133, that your people will start to dwell together in unity and, 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 and encourage each other and bless each other and work together, Father God. It's like precious oil pouring down upon the beard, upon Aaron's beard, and upon the collar of his robes, Lord. It's as if Hermon, Mount Hermon were flowing on, flowing on Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows his blessings, even life forevermore. Praise God, Father, for Psalm 133. I believe that's one of the keys for, for, for revival. And also Proverbs 22, 4 says that the fear of the Lord. Wow, thank you, Lord God. Humility and fear of the Lord is the beginning of long life and of health, wealth, and prosperity. And so God has given us keys in his word, you know, humility, unity, and prayer, and all the gifts of the Spirit. Once all this starts to take off, my goodness, we're going to have... The revival we're looking for praise God and um, I want to give you just a, a little bit more before we pray today father God I pray for these gifts to be activated even in us today Lord God that if there's any word of knowledge and word of wisdom for anyone watching today father you will activate the gift of, of prophecy and word of knowledge father God that we can release a word of edification and encouragement that someone watching today Lord God and anyone here father we give you glory and praise and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Before I continue, Andrew, any prayer requests? Hallelujah. And if you have a word of knowledge, thank you for Prophetess Andrea. That's what I'll call her because she moves in the gift of prophecy. And, uh, and, and Philip had four daughters in the book of Acts. I believe it's chapter 19 or 21. I think it's 21. Uh, Philip had four daughters that were all prophetess. That's why God is speaking to the women today to rise up into your calling because, you know, it, when you're born again of the spirit, there's, wow, thank you, Lord. No limitations. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's no limitations in the spirit. God doesn't see Jew and Gentile, male or female or this or that. He sees you by the power of the spirit operating in you. Hallelujah. And you can, and yes, there's an order in the kingdom of God, but God is saying if you're called to be a prophetess, you can release the word of God and people will get healed, saved, delivered, set free. In Jesus' mighty name. Uh, prayer request. Uh, Linda Gregory, pray for physical healing for me uh, today under attack. Praise God. Father, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We, uh, thank you, Lord. We just nullify and cancel every every plan against her life in Jesus' holy name. Did you want to pray for Linda, Andrea? Sure. Okay, praise God. I just feel, grab your microphone. Hallelujah. We got to get everyone moving here. This, this is why I said it's teamwork. If you feel led to be called uh, to learn how to activate these spiritual gifts, we're, we're making this third heaven sanctuary as a place where we can give you the opportunity to grow in your gift, to activate your gift. We need practice. Can you imagine these soccer players who they're going to go and play once a week or whatever and they have no practice in between? How effective they're, are they going to be? So, you know, the Bible tells us, gives us many analogies. Athlete is one analogy that you have to discipline yourself and work hard and, and, and uh, diligent is the word. And then you'll see the results. So we're challenging all of you to uh, kick it up a notch. Go ahead, come on, Andrea, and uh, pray for Linda. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you that, Lord God, your word says, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. 
and every tongue that is risen in judgment against Linda, Lord God. Father, we condemn it now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for this is the heritage of the children of the Lord. Father, I thank you that even as I stood back there, Lord God, and even as I stand here now, Lord God, Father, I can feel your healing power. I can feel the fire of God, Father God, flowing through this sanctuary. And Father, there is no distance in prayer. And Father, I pray today for Linda, Lord God, that that same fire that is in this house, oh God, that is in your house, Lord, Father, would touch her today from the top of her head to the very soles of her feet. Father, your word does say that we're too touching anything shall agree. It shall be none of our Father who is in heaven. And Father, I pray for complete healing and restoration in her body. That Father God, every single part of her would be made whole from the top of her head to the very soles of her feet. Ha, mina, iremeyande, irana, zutu, ziki. Mira, majinga, rindai, digindai, gelaha, sukuru, nanjija, jakuku, kunjaja, andai. Vili, andika, angaga, anjiga, nahande, iziga, labungunjaga, andehe, vahala, bashutu. Mira, masutu, rama, kasata, zuku, rendai, nuhu, laha, sete, rama, dede, rana, zuku, nehira, bashiki, rande, lazinga, alaha, dihande, kura, nimba, jaka, gunguja, andava, ishehe, la, zu, kasununawa. Linda, the Lord would say to you, he says to tell you to enlarge your tent pegs. There's a scripture in the Bible that talks about enlarging your tent and, and, and the tent pegs being stretched out. And he's saying, enlarge your tent pegs. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that as she expands, as she moves into the ministry that you have called her to, O oh God, Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you will raise up people to pray for her, to undergird her, Lord God, to come alongside her in her ministry, Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that it will be a ministry of restoration, O oh God, a ministry of restoration in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I just see the, the word women, O oh God, and Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that there will be a restoration to the women that shall be in contact with, Lord God, that divinely you will ordain her steps in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that you are taking her to higher heights and deeper depths in you, Lord God. For your word says that, Lord God, that we are seated in heavenly places with you, O God, above principalities and powers. And Father, we thank you that we command the darkness to be pushed back and that the light of Christ would shine shine around her in a greater way and in a greater measure, O oh God. Father, I decree and declare over her that no weapon formed against her shall prosper. And Father, that you have not given her a spirit of fear, but you have given her a spirit of love, power, and of a sound mind. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen. Uh, praise God, amen. <clears throat> That's a great example or a demonstration of speaking in tongues and then the interpretation coming by the power of the Holy Spirit, amen? And that's what we want to see happening. We want to give everyone that opportunity. This is a very practical teaching today, I believe. Uh, there's a time for preaching, but then there's also time for teaching. And I feel that today we need to understand these gifts uh, very, um, we, need, we need to understand them very well and apply them, praise God. But I want to read something before we if, wrap up in, in our final prayer today. Because like I said, I just want to keep it short. But I want to read to you that what Apostle Paul wrote after chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians. He writes the love chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And, uh, and then finally he gets to chapter 14. And it's just interesting that that chapter 13 is right in between there uh, to kind of, uh, I don't know, I, I guess you can say balance the, the love of God with the gifts of the Spirit. I, I believe the fruit of the Spirit, it, 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 some people will say it takes precedence over the gifts, but I feel we need them both, and the gifts are very important. And this is what he says in chapter 14. Follow the way of love, which he just told us about in chapter 13, and eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit. So it's not one or the other, it's both. So we need to follow the way of love and eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. So he's highlighting prophecy is a very important one of the gifts. And why? Because it brings encouragement, edification, and exhortation to the body of Christ. 
and it's also listed in the other uh, um, uh, list of gifts in Romans 8, I believe it is. But let me finish here. Praise God for uh, uh, verse 2 says, For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. So when you're speaking in a tongue, which we just demonstrated here today, I'm speaking to God, not to man. So you can't understand what I'm saying, and I can't even understand what I'm saying. But then God will interpret it for me, and that's why we need the gift of interpretation. So that, you know, sometimes I'll be praying like that in tongues, and then I'll hear Psalm 136 in the Spirit. And then I'll go there, and it says, God says, my love endures forever. He wants you to know how, how much his love, his love is for you. So this is how the gifts of the Spirit operate and work. It says, indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. So again, there's the type of tongues, which is a language which you can understand. But then there's a type of tongues, which is an unknown language. That's your spiritual language. which it's, You're just uttering mysteries by the Spirit. And no one can understand them except for God. But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. Verse 4 Anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. So, you know, on the day of Pentecost, they were not speaking in tongues to edify themselves. They were speaking in tongues so that other people can be edified because it was a known language. This kind of spiritual language is unknown. You can call it a heavenly language, an angelic language. But it said, let me continue reading here. It says, but the one who prophesies edifies the church. I would like every one of you to speak in tongues but I would rather have you prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues unless someone interprets so that the church may be edified. So do you see the difference there? If you're speaking a word, of pro a prophetic word or a word of prophecy, because it's in the language that people can understand, they can edify them better. And so that's why he, he elevated that as a greater gift in speaking in tongues. Unless you can interpret the tongues, now it becomes prophecy in a way because you're speaking that, uh, you're interpreting it in the language that they can understand, so it edifies everyone, not only yourself. I hope that brings some clarification, because I just feel that this is one of the issues that if you're believing wrong doctrine, it's going to hinder you, because if you don't believe in tongues, if you have a wrong teaching of speaking in tongues, then you're never going to be able to do something when they're not even teaching you how, how to ride the bike properly. <laughs> That's another analogy to say that, you know, we need to be have proper teaching on the word of God and the gifts so we can apply them effectively. Amen. Okay, now verse 5, he says, I would, okay, so I already read, yeah, I would like everyone of you to speak in tongues, but I would rather have you prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues unless someone interprets. Now, verse 6, now, brothers and sisters, if I come to you and speak in tongues, what good will I be to you unless I bring you some revelation or knowledge? or prophecy, or word of instruction. Again, he's just showing to us that speaking in tongues is important, but it has to be interpreted so that that revelation comes forth, or that knowledge or prophecy. And then finally, he says, um, uh, verse 12, I'm just going to jump there for a moment. It says, so it is with you, since you, are, since you are eager for gifts of the Spirit, try to excel in those that build up the church. Uh, for this reason, the one who speaks in a tongue should pray that they may interpret what they say. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. So your spirit can be praying in tongues, um, but my mind is unfruitful. So again, you can, there's even scientific tests that have been done now to show that when people are speaking in tongues, it's coming out of the, I'm not sure if it's a left or right, but the, the creative part of their brain. So their mind is actually kind of, being bypassed because you're you're praying from the spirit, um, and then finally, uh, where am I here? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my understanding, and I will sing with my spirit. So you can pray in the spirit, you can sing in the spirit, but all of that is 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 more effective if you can translate it into a way that your mind can understand it. Um, he says, but I. But I will also sing with my understanding. Otherwise, when you are praising God in the spirit, how can someone else who is now put in position of an inquirer say amen to your thanksgiving since they do not know what you are saying? So again, what he's saying is that, you know, if we're all speaking in tongues and no one can understand it, how can we come into agreement and say amen? But when you speak it in an intelligible language or, or, or translate it into a word of prophecy, 
Everyone is edified. And then we can say amen and amen. Okay, verse 18. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. But in the church, I would rather speak five intelligible words to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. And then he continues on. So you can read the whole chapter 14. I just want to give you the importance of all the gifts. And so we should pursue love and eagerly desire prophecy as well as all the other gifts I mentioned here. I love the power gifts because in Acts 1.8, um, what, what, what does it say? That when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will move in power. That's called dunamis power in the Greek. The word is dunamis. It's explosive power. And that's what we need in the church today. We need people that are operating in the dunamis power and the power gifts here. You know, working of miracles, gifts of healing, and faith. Faith will ignite some tremendous things in our lives. And we've preached a lot on faith, but I think, I think we need to give it more attention in the near future. Praise God. I'm going to close in prayer. Um, but I also want to share Jude 20. Any last minute prayer requests before we, we uh, wrap it up? Jude 20. Let me just go there for a second. For some reason, I need to look at what Jude 20 says. It says, but you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. So again, Jude says that praying in the Holy Spirit is very key and crucial to us becoming spiritually stronger and more mature and, 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 and to activate the gifts. So that's an anointing. Wow, praise God. The anointing is what breaks every yoke. And when you activate the gifts of the Spirit, it, it, it manifests a greater anointing in your life. So that's just a message that I feel had to go across today. Let's get serious about the Word of God. Let's activate the, the gifts and let's flow in them. Amen. Everyone ready to flow in the gifts of the Spirit? Praise God. Uh, any last uh, prayer requests, Andrea? I don't see any. Gifts no. Here. Okay. Father, we thank you today, Lord God, for this revelation that you brought forth. I thank you that the revelatory gifts have come alive, Lord, in the hearts and minds of your people, Lord God. I pray that anyone, Father, who has not yet made a decision, to be born again of the Spirit, that they will just repent and turn from their ways and, and, and receive you, Lord. The Word of God says anyone who confesses with their mouth and believes with their heart shall be born again, shall be uh, baptized, shall, be, shall receive. You can even say, Father, I repent today of my sin. I ask you to, to forgive me and, and to baptize me with the power of your Holy Spirit. I acknowledge and receive Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach, is my Lord and Savior. I desire to be born again of the Spirit and water, Lord. I thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your forgiveness. I receive it by faith today, and I declare that I am born again. Activate the gifts in me. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray for that impartation today, Lord, of the gifts of the Spirit. Let him come alive, Father God, and every born-again believer, and even those who are just being saved today, Father God, as a result of their decision to accept the finished work of the cross of Calvary and your free gift of grace, Lord God. You're, you're no respecter of persons, and Lord, you're just handing it out to anyone who's willing to receive it and accept you as their personal Lord and Savior, as their Abba Father, actually. That's what salvation is, reconciliation with the Father. So you're coming home to your heavenly Father, and you have now received the spirit of adoption, which can call him Abba Father. Before you're born again in the spirit, we cannot really call him Abba because we don't know him at that intimate level. But the spirit who comes to indwell in you, Will, will, will allow you to become a true son and daughter of God. And that's what it means for the sons of God to arise, is to uh, allow the Holy Spirit to take total control. My goodness, thank you, Lord. Apostle, said it, Apostle Paul said, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. We need to um, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Many gifts are being activated today in your people, Lord God. I thank you for an empowerment in the church, Lord God. The body of Christ will rise up, Father God, and do signs, wonders, and miracles because those who believe, those are the manifestations that will follow them, Lord God. The signs, wonders, and miracles must follow all those who believe, Lord. We declare that we are, we believe, Lord. We are the redeemed of the Lord and let the redeemed of the Lord say so today. We thank you, Father, for the precious blood of the Lamb, which uh, is, uh, for cleansing and healing and deliverance and, and, and empowerment today, Lord. I give you glory in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. One more prayer request? No, Linda says um, all the pain's gone. Praise God. So, amen. Amen. Powerful testimony overcome by the 
word of your testimony Amen. and the blood of the lamb. And this is just a way of equipping us because when I get into um, deliverance this month, we're going to have a Saturday night prophetic deliverance meeting in a few weeks. But I didn't want to jump into deliverance because I feel God says well, we need to be properly grounded in the gifts of the spirit so that we know how to bind demons, cast them out, heal the sick, do all these things. But you first have to be empowered by the Holy Spirit and have the gifts operating in your life. So that's why I didn't want to jump too quickly. But when we get into deliverance, a lot of it happens through that gift called discernment of spirits. There's books on demonology where we can categorize all the demons, all the spirits that are operating in the uh, spiritual realm, as well as the angels. There's, there's powerful uh, angels that God has assigned. You know, we have Michael the Archangel, Gabriel the Messenger Angel, but there's like guardian angels and thousands upon thousands and myriads of angels that are willing, they hearken unto the voice of God. And as soon as you release the word of God out of your mouth, which is the sword of the spirit, the angels start to work on your behalf. Wow, thank you, Lord. We activate the gifts. I mean, the, the, the angelic power, the, the, your angels today, Father, your holy angels, we activate them by the power of your word. The spoken word, Father God, gets them moving, Father, on behalf of your children. We pray for divine favor, divine protection for everyone watching today, Father God. And I give you all the praise and glory for what you have done and are continuing to do. Here at Third Heaven Ministries, we say thank you, Abba, Father, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. God bless you all. We'll see you again next Sunday. And uh, how, how far are we in? Was that 30 or 40 minutes? Or? One hour. One hour. Okay. I tried to, but that includes the music. So I hope we're bringing some worship and prayer and the word of God to you. I would like some feedback. Please, if you're watching, let us know if you want longer teaching or if if 30 or 40 minutes is enough but also if you'd like to support us uh, on our th thirdheaven.org website we will be posting a new way of, of helping us if you want if, if you feel led to give an offering uh, uh, in, in, into our ministry we really appreciate it um, for those of you that are here in Canada we are uh, registered with the CRA as a charitable organization and you will get a tax receipt for any donations toward our ministry we want to do a lot more work with uh, the orphan like feeding orphans and and we did support um my father's house in the philippines years ago and i want to do more of, of support doing the work of of the kingdom of god including uh, that type of ministry if you feel led in any way to do mini uh, missionary work or missions work uh, uh, feel free to contact us there's lots of open doors and we're praying for more labors for the kingdom of God. We're going to go offline now, but you can give online or call this number if you need any prayer or you need any help in sowing into the kingdom of God. There's eternal rewards, but also rewards in this lifetime. God bless you all, and we'll see you soon. Amen.